Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all my Steel Swarm Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for March 2019. I've been wanting to do a Steel Swarm deck profile for quite some time now, and it's definitely been one of the most difficult of the Hidden Arsenal uh, decks just to create a, I would say, mostly pure version of the deck profile. Um, I saw some uh, versions run uh, Monarchs just for a little more support, but I figured I wanted to try and do as best as I could just for like a pure version of the Steel Swarms, making full use of all the uh, you know, Steel Swarm monsters that we have available to us, and just a little more additional support from some other monsters, and some other L Swarm support as well. It's really fun. The whole point of the deck is just to tribute summon out your bigger Steel Swarm monsters uh, to use their effects against their, uh, your opponent. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So to start off, for the big Steel Swarm monsters, I decided to run a different variety of the monsters. You can switch up the uh, numbers of all the high-level monsters, just depending on your personal preference. Uh, but I run one Steel Swarm uh, Gear Stag. You can tribute this card in face of attack position by tributing one Steel Swarm monster. And when this card is tribute summoned by tributing a Steel Swarm monster, you can select one card your opponent controls, send it to the graveyard, and gain 1,000 life points. So the fact that it only needs one tribute to... Uh, summon out this card if you use a uh, Steel Swarm monster for the tribute. Just gives you an easy access to a level 7 uh, powerhouse. Then the life point gain definitely also does help because there's a lot of cards in this deck that do use life points for the cost for a bunch of the uh, effects. So just very, very helpful um, to have that option available to us with uh, Gear Stag. I also run two Steel Swarm Mantis. Uh, when this card is tribute summoned by tributing a Steel Swarm monster, you can pay 1,000 life points to select one Steel Swarm monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So with Mantis, you just get more uh, monster presence out on the field, which uh, helps if you want to go for any of your extra deck plays or just more tribute fodder, depending on which one you special summon back out to the field for some of your other uh, bigger Steel Swarm monsters. And I only have one Steel Swarm Moth. I would run uh, more additional ones. I just wanted to try out some of the other uh, higher level Steel Swarm monsters just for a more fun uh, variant of the deck. But if you wanted to take out uh, the bigger level Steel Swarms, which we'll show in just a bit, you can add additional Steel Swarm Moths uh, in replacement for it just for a more consistent, I would say, tribute. Because um, the high level tribute uh, Steel Swarms, like I said, are definitely more powerhouse worthy. But more consistently, just having the Steel Swarms that require one tribute in the deck, I would say, is a little more better. Uh, but Steel Swarm Moth, uh, when it is tribute summoned by tributing a Steel Swarm monster, you can pay 1,000 life points to select and return up to two cards your opponent controls to the hand. So the 1,000 life points, I would say, is definitely worth it just to get rid of, let's say, extra deck monsters or just pesky back row on the field and then go in for the attack with your Steel Swarm monsters. So Moth definitely does help for those plays. And then for the bigger powerhouses, like I said, I wanted to play just for the uh, fun aspect. I run one Steel Swarm Longhorn and one Steel Swarm Hercules. Now, Hercules requires uh, three Steel Swarm tributes to normal summon, and you can pay half your life points to destroy all other cards in the field. So having a 3,200 attack point monster that can just destroy everything else in the field and hit big for your opponent, definitely uh, fun when you can get this summon off for sure. And with Longhorn, once per turn, if this card was tribute summoned by tributing a Steel Swarm monster, you can pay 1,000 life points to target one card on the field and destroy it. So like I said, you just have big powerhouses available to you with these two cards. I wouldn't say as, you know, consistent as some of the other ones, as I've already stated, like uh, Moth and Mantis. So if you wanted to take these out, I would definitely recommend just putting in uh, two more Moth just to have some of your uh, bigger, more consistent plays to go for, for sure. And for some of the lower level Steel Swarm monsters uh, you use to summon out the bigger ones, I run three Steel Swarm Cell. If you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. And while this card is face up on the field, it cannot be tributed except for the tribute summon of a Steel Swarm monster and cannot be used as a synchro material. So you're not really limited to the synchro. You don't even synchro summon at all in this deck. But just being able to have this card easily special summoned out and not take up a normal summon makes it very ideal to run three so you at least open up uh, this card with any of your other steel swarm monsters that you may want to tribute summon for and i also run two steel swarm uh, genome this one i run just especially for the fact that uh, you have some of the higher level ones in the deck like steel swarm longhorn to summon out if you decide to uh, take out 
uh, Hercules and Longhorn. Uh, Genome, I would more than likely replace for some of the other level fours that we run in the Jack, just for uh, bigger numbers on those counts, since we do run uh, Call, uh, Ties of the Brethren, which I'll get to later on in the spell count, explaining the use of that card as well. But I like Genome just for that additional uh, two tributes, so very, very helpful with those bigger Steel Swarm plays. And now for the level four Steel Swarm monsters, I run four Steel Swarm Caller. When a Steel Swarm monster is tribute summoned but face up by tributing this card, you can special summon one level four or lower Steel Swarm monster from your deck. So just keeping consistency with your monsters by tributing uh, this card definitely does help just so you have plenty of monsters out on the field to go for. So I'd say a definite three of, and the fact that it has 1700 attack just makes it all the more better for your plays. And I also run two Steel Swarm Sting. If you were to take out Genome, I recommend just putting in a third one of this card. I like it for that one option. When this card you control is sent to your graveyard, you target one face-up uh, ritual, fusion, or synchro monster on the field and destroy that target. Now, I know we have other you know extra deck options available to us now, including Pendulum, Exceed, and also Link. But being able to take care of you know ritual, fusion, or synchro, if you're going up against that option against your opponent and they have those monsters, Monsters. Just being able to make use of Sting to get rid of those monsters definitely does come in handy. If you know your opponent obviously doesn't have these cards, you can easily side them out uh, next game. But more fun aspect since you know a lot of decks do run these three extra deck and main deck special summon uh, monsters, and Sting can just easily take care of those monsters. And I also run two Steel Swarm uh, Gatekeeper. If Steel Swarm Monster is tributed, summoned face up, while this card is face up on the field, you can normal summon or set one monster in addition to your normal summon or set that turn. So just uh, like uh, an additional normal summon that definitely does help and come in handy. If you open up Gatekeeper, you can even just, you know, set it on the field and act as a defense, depending on what your opponent summons out. But all together tied with Sting, Collar, and uh, Gatekeeper, the fact that they're all level four dark fiend type uh, monsters, they are all your targets to work together with uh, with ties of the brethren able to get out the three steel swarm monsters to then use later on for tributing out uh, some of your other cards and lastly, for the Elf Swarm monsters, I'm also trying out three Evil Swarm uh, Kirkion. With this one, you can only use each effect of Evil Swarm Kirkion once per turn. And while this card is in the graveyard, if it was sent there this turn, you can normal summon one Elf Swarm monster uh, for one less tribute. And you can banish one Elf Swarm monster from your graveyard, then target one Elf Swarm monster in your graveyard, add that target to your hand. Also, this card gains the following effect. This turn, you can activate this effect to normal summon one Elf Swarm monster. So just that help and consistency definitely does come in handy for some of your extra deck plays that we may go for. We run a good number of the Elsewhere monsters just fully lined up in the extra deck along with all the other cards in the deck for some extra deck plays and Kirkion definitely does help for that and the fact that it just needs Elsewhere monsters to make and not Evil Swarm helps all the better. And then for the non-Steel uh, Swarm monsters that I run in the deck, I run one Armageddon Knight and one Dark Greffer. With all the high-level monsters we run, Dark Greffer is just an easy special summon that you can make use of. And Armageddon Knight, being able to send uh, your Steel Swarms to the graveyard just helps for some consistent plays with some of the other spells we run in the deck, which we'll get to right now which I run are three recurring Nightmare. You target two dark monsters with zero defense in your graveyard or add those targets to your hand. Now, a good amount of all the Steel Swarm monsters have zero defense, so just being able to make full use of this card uh, for recycling and then reusing all your Steel Swarm monsters, I, I would say, I think, aside from a couple, Gatekeeper included, uh, Nightmare just comes in very helpful to keep those plays going, so definite three of in the deck. And then four additional draw power, just getting to the cards that you need. Three Allura Darkness. Um, like I said, every card in the main deck is dark, so you can make full use of Allura whenever you open it up with whatever monster you have. And also just being able, or just being like, you know, one summon short of getting out a monster, I run three, double summon. This card just helps for that additional normal summon when you don't have one of the uh, Steel Swarm monsters, additional normal summon available to you, or you just need that one extra one after getting a monster on the field. This card definitely does come in handy for uh, that. 
And as we spoke earlier in the video, I run three ties of the brethren. You pay 2,000 life points, then target one level four or lower monster you control for the rest of this turn after this card resolves. You cannot special summon the monsters. Also special summon two monsters from your deck with the same type, attribute, and level as the monster, but with different names for each other and that monster. And you cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this. But going first, being able to set up your field with the gatekeeper, the sting, and the collar definitely does help for your plays. It just limits your special summon so remember that as well with this card and uh for a couple one ofs with the deck i also run one creeping darkness you banish two dark monsters from your graveyard add one level four or lower dark monster from your deck to your hand so you have plenty of darks also in the graveyard that if you don't use them for recurring nightmare or any other card creeping darkness just helps with that search from the deck and I also run one Infestation Pandemic. At all face-up elsewhere monsters you can currently control are unaffected by other spell or traps. You can search it with Ophion if you're able to make that card with the extra deck. And it says all face-up, so if you have a good amount of elsewhere monsters, which are the Steel Swarm and the Evil Swarms you run in the deck, you can attack into your opponent without any worry of any of their back row they may be playing. And to finish up the rest of the one ofs, I run one Monster Reborn, one Foolish Burial, and one Reinforcements of the Army. Plenty of send ofs that you can just recover with Recurring Nightmare, Easy Special Summons, and the search is for the Armageddon Knight and the Dark Greffer to go into and make more use of for your summons. But that is it for the main deck. When I move on to the extra, I run one Steel Swarm Origin. Just helps to kind of limit uh, your opponent's extra deck plays. You just need two Elsworn monsters to uh, use this card. And it's also a good protection card depending on what you go for. Uh, easy link as well to make. And I also run one Nightmare Cerberus, one Nightmare Phoenix, uh, one Link Karibo. This is just very helpful if you open up uh, solely just the cell. You don't have any other plays to go for. Just a more defensive play. Also run one Agashic Magician and one Wii Witch's Apprentice. I don't run anything higher than the Link 2 in the deck since most of the time for your plays you'll mostly be working with two monsters to go into the extra deck. That's why I run a pretty good uh, rank 4 lineup. So one Evil Swarm Exiton Knight and one Steel Swarm Roach. Both these, they're just useful with the Infestation Pandemic and the whole L Swarm line in total. And I also run one Evil Swarm Ophion. Um, once again, just a very helpful shutting down your opponent's level 5 or higher special summons. Also one Abyss Dweller, one Tornado Dragon, one Utopia and Utopia the Lightning. And also one Baguska and one Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon to finish off the extra deck. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, with the finish of the Steel Swarm deck, I've actually been able to uh, do a deck profile for all of the six original decks from Hidden Arsenal 5, uh, 6, and 7. I think Steel Swarms were the last one. I've done Gustos, Gishkis, Lavals, Gem Knights, and uh, Vylons all uh, very recently within the last uh, year or so. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and Kira Twig out.